There would be no Pentecostal of Alexandria if it was not from my father and my pastor. A godly man, he's going to come, whatever he's going to do for a few minutes, it's his pulpit. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. What he's done for me. I had the privilege of God reaching down into a German community, getting hold of a German lady with five preachers, to those of you who have heard it before, came to our community. My mother went and received the beautiful gift of the Holy Ghost. That was in 19 and 21. It's been my pleasure to have been in Pentecost 76 years. I was baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ 70 years ago. And I thank God for my heritage. I don't toy with it. I don't play games with it. I know what it's done for me. I'll never forget what it's done for me. It's kept me. And I thank God for it. And I thank God for a gift of a wonderful, beautiful wife, Miss Vesta. <laughs> I carry the briefcase for Vesta and Brother Anthony. And the gift of Brother Anthony is to make it in our family. But I want you to know, <laughs> every one of you are special gifts from the Lord. And for the, every one of you are special gifts. You have a special place in God's divine economy. You have a special place. And I thank God for every one of you if you ever dawned on you how much God loved you, you'd have a nurse break down five times a day. If you knew, you don't realize how much God loves you and how, how much he's concerned about every one of you. Every one of you are very important in God's side. And you carry a big club in your city. You carry a big club wherever you are. And you're going to wheel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I've been in Pentecost these 76 years. I find no fault with it. It gets better every day. I can't stand to see a preacher sitting on a platform with things going and just sitting there like a frog on a log. Do you think for a minute I'm going to let those Jews at the wedding wall get ahead of me? I was over there the other day. And I, I had my hat on. I went down there and I got right that wall right with them. The Old Testament speaks about when you worship the Lord, put your body in motion. That's why the Jews do it. Put it in motion. It'd be a good idea if some of you would put your body in motion. That's a congregation, somebody. I'll see what you've got down deep in your soul. Woo! 
Hallelujah. Oh, yes. From the second, third chapter of the book of uh, Acts of the Apostles, I got a subject too big for me tonight. I need to give it to Brother Jeff Arnold, Brother Treese, or somebody else. But I'm going to struggle with it. He got a hold of me, and I hope it'll get a hold of you. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive out of the time of restitution or the restoration of all things. Ye are the, going on down a few verses, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, everybody say Abraham, Amen. in thy seed, Isaac shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. Can there come a revival out of Hebron? You may be seated. Can there come a revival out of Hebron? In 1970, Brother David, a great Tommy Craft, and I, and a few more preachers, went there, and I went into the Machpelah, into that tomb of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When I walked in there, my hair stood on end. And I went up to the tomb of Abraham. I said, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> I went to the tomb of Isaac. I said, everything's going to be all right. I mean, it's, it, it shook me. I went to the tomb of Jacob. I said, everything is going to be all right. But is it? Is it? There's an intruder. And intruders that's trying to discredit and discount everything that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob stood for. Hebron is the, one of the oldest cities in the world and probably the oldest city in the land of Palestine. That was the only piece of land that Abraham owned. He was a sojourner. It was a place that Caleb said, this is my mountain. It belongs to me. There's something going to be deposited there that's going to have a far-reaching effect not only back there, but clear down to this present day. It was in Hebron that King David ruled for seven years. I see over there protecting our priorities. That tomb of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob needs to be protected, and it will be protected. The Arabs and Arafat are trying to take over. President Arafat, being interviewed on TV talk show, announced that Abraham was not Jewish, but rather he was an Iraqi and a Muslim. However, Islam did not exist until 25 years hundred years after Abraham. President Arafat always has had a purpose, and in this case, it was to remove all claims of the Jewish world to Hebron. Hear it. And especially to the tombs of the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. President Arafat said, the whole world, or the whole building that entombs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob should be a Muslim mosque. Arafat said that Jesus 
was not a Jew, but that he was a Palestinian. They think they're going to take over that city. And if they do take over that city, they can in their method, in their way, absolutely make uh, everything obsolete that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did. But I want you to know, you say, how does that involve us? It involves uh, I'm glad you asked that question. I'm glad you asked that question. How does that involve? I'll tell you how it involves us. I'm going to tell it in just a minute. But I say, Arafat, Mr. President, are you sure you want to take over Hebron? You might get more than you're bargaining for. There's got to come a revival out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they better know what they are doing because they're dealing with God's divine prophecy and God's divine providence. They better know what they are doing. They better be sure that they know what they are doing. But God Almighty made some divine covenants. How does that involve us? I'll tell you how it involves us. Galatians 3 and 14 says that the blessings of Abraham, yeah, you're involved when you think you are. If they can discredit and discount that, they can discount everything you got. Are you with me? I don't believe you know what I'm talking about. If they can discount the tomb of Abraham, that's what they don't want Hebron. They want Abraham Isaac's tomb. That is, say, it belongs to us. There is a terrible onslaught against God's divine program from the very beginning. And they're going to try to destroy it, but it's not going to work. Whatever God has promised, God Almighty is going to fulfill it, and it's going to bring it to pass just as sure as I am standing here today. <clears throat> Galatians 3 and 14. How does that involve you and me? That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so goes our gospel truth, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Though it be a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man can know it or add thereto. They cannot do it. There is no way. So if some way they're after it, that's why they're negotiating with Mr. Netanyahu, or what his name is. They're trying to negotiate. They want to coexist. When God puts those there, God's all-seeing eye is watching Hebron. He's watching it. And if they can destroy that, they can destroy what you got. Because it's an onslaught against God's divine economy, God's divine gospel, and God's divine program. I've been in this too long to let anything interfere with it. I'm not going to let Mr. Arafat, I'm not going to let Mr. Charismatic, I'm not going to let nobody come against this truth that I'm a part of. I'm going to defend it. Hallelujah. Abraham, everything's all right. Isaac, everything's all right. Jacob's all right. I walked around. You can walk around. it. I walk around those tombs. I was thrilled. I was excited on what was going on. I'm still excited today because I'm still a part of the Abrahamic covenant. God gave that covenant. And God's, not going, to, God's going to let it slip through his fingers. He is going to keep it. We are the other portion. The other part of the Abrahamic covenant. God told Lord Abraham, he said, I'm going on every male child circumcised. That's going to be my covenant forever. And whatever child is not circumcised, that person shall be cut off 
Did you hear Mr. Arafat? Shall be cut off. That promise still exists today. Hallelujah. I want to go on just a little bit further. They said, Abraham is a Muslim of the is, is Ishmael's daddy also. Okay, I'll give it to you. We'll give you Abraham. It's, it don't stop there. God told Abraham, he said, I'm going to take Sarah. Yeah. I'm going to take Sarah. I'm going to take everything out of the hands of all this other bunch over here. All the illegitimates. I'm going to take it out of their hands. I'm going to, I'm going to take Sarah. Sarai. She through promise going to be called Sarah. Said, I'm going to you take her, and I'm going to make a man child. I'm going to bring a covenant of promise. He's a promised child. How can I have a child 90 years old? I'll tell you how. God saw the day down there that some guy would try to take over his tomb or try to do away with it. You're not going to be able to do away with God's divine program. It's going to stand. It's going to stay forever. <clears throat> How can I have a child when I'm 90 years of age? God said, I'm not talking about that. I want to give you a miracle child. I want to have somebody take over. That when President Arafat walks in there and claims Abraham, that's all that he claim because there's two more in there that has the same kind of promise. He said, Abraham, you see this land? I'm going to give the promise as stars are in heaven, as the, as the sand the sea. He said, from the river Nile, going up the river, Euphrates. That whole land belongs to you and nobody's going to be able in the end take it away from you. That promise of going back to Abraham is going to go back to him. I promised you that land. I'm going to give you that land. I don't care what they say. God Almighty is going to fulfill that promise. God said unto Abraham, I'm going to take Sarah and she's going to have a child. And her seed is going to be the seed that is going to inherit the land. That's going to be a continuity, a continuation of my promise that I gave to Abraham. The promise is unto you all the way down. And God said, Sarah, your name is going to be changed of Sarai to Sarah and he said that child is going to be a continuity a continuation of my covenant promise now if Abraham had been alone they might have could have defeated us but they can't defeat us because Isaac has that very same promise of that land shall be yours. It shall be your seeds from then on. Another, another thing. Another thing. Isaac is going to be the type of Jesus Christ. And he's going to go, or the servant is going to go into Mesopotamia. And he's going to take gifts. He's going to take the beauty and the glory of the bridegroom Isaac. And he's going to take it into Mesopotamia. And there he's going to demonstrate it and show it to his bride. I don't know how many husbands and wives all these other fellows had back through there. But Isaac only had one bride. And that was Rebecca. I want you to know God's got one bride. And that's his bride called Jesus Christ. He doesn't have all kinds of brides and all kinds of churches. God's got one lover. And I love him with all of my heart. I love him with all of my soul. He is the heavenly bridegroom and we are the bride. I romance him every day. I love him every day because he has given me that covenant promise. And when, when the servant returned back to where 
Isaac was. You know how he knew you know how he knew that was his bride because he saw the gifts that he gave to the bride. How God recognizes us is this beautiful gift that God has given us. He has given us certain identity, certain clothing, certain look, a certain way. Us I want you to know I'm not a ne just a never day joker. A never a type of fella. When we walk down the street, you and me, you, you and me all of us like out here. When we walk down the street, we are the original. We're no duplicate. We're no duplicate. We are the original when we walk down the street. And I thank God for it. Yeah. How'd I let you down, Abraham? How would I let you down, Isaac? How would I let you down, Jacob? We're going to have revival. Because God promised it to us. The heavens must retain a lineage of Abraham until all things, until the restoration of all things, then God Almighty is going to come back and turn this world wrong side out or upside down or wrong side in or upside wrong right side up. He's going to do it. So I'll go ahead, I'll give you, I'll give you Abraham. But how about Isaac? He's a seed. My seed shall be named after Isaac. That's why Jesus' name baptism comes through Isaac. A Jew is a Jew. On this uh, trip we made over there, we had Dr. Kaplan here in the hospital. Every time they'd see he and I'd go round and round and round. On the Bible. He said, I cannot accept Jesus Christ because he is not the son of David. Well, we went around, around anyhow. 1978, Shalom Isaac was a bodyguard for, for the, uh, the president at that time. He lived in his home, mid year on. He received the Holy Ghost and he received the revelation of the name of Jesus, named baptism. He came to America with the assembly brothers. The Lord Jesus Christ baptized him in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother David, Brother, uh, Brother David Gray, Brother Tommy Craft went to the church of Mount Olivet that night. I said, uh, I said, uh, Shlomo, would you mind meeting our group and talking to us when he got through with the tour? They did. And I said, Shlomo, I said, there's a doctor in Alexandria has got me. I said, I don't know how to handle it. He says that Jesus Christ is not of the seed of David. He all bent over laughing. I looked at him and said, that wasn't a funny laugh about. He said, a Jew is a Jew because of mama. And the lineage of Mary goes right back to David. I came back and I said, hey, Doc, are you sure that you can't accept Jesus Christ as a Messiah? I said, is it a fact? <laughs> that a Jew is a Jew because of mama. He has not said one word, and that was in 1970 since that day. <laughs> We're the lineage through Isaac. Do you know, Mr. Fat, who you're fooling with? The lineage we, Paul said, we are the seed of Isaac through buried with him by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. We are the seed of Isaac. How about Jacob? How about Jacob? He was the father of the patriarchs, 12 of them. Joseph, Judah, and the other brother Tiny preached about how that, that Jacob's thigh was thrown out of joint. And he walked differently ever after that. It was at the river Jabbok that there Jacob had a wrestling match with the Lord. And he was going to have to meet Esau, in whom he cheated him out. He didn't cheat him out of his birthright. I want you to know this birthright, being baptized in Jesus' name, but filled the Holy Ghost, means more to me than a pot of soup or than anything else in the world. It means more than anything in the world. This beautiful gospel of Jesus Christ means everything in the world to me. Yeah. 
Jacob got the birthright. And through him, all oh, I don't have time to go on down through everything that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob did. But I want you to know that God Almighty has everything planned just like he wants it planned. It was in the book of Nehemiah, if you like to turn there. It was in a conclave. It was in a meeting almost such as we are having right here. Begin of the ninth first verse of the ninth chapter of Nehemiah. In the twenty fourth day of the month, going down to second verse, the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers. They stood in their place, and for one fourth part of the day they heard the scripture read. They fasted and they prayed. They were in Jerusalem now, get rid of build walls and temples and bring Jerusalem back to its original position as it was before. And they were going through this reading and praying, studying and fasting. And all of a sudden, Nehemiah saw the Levites sitting there on the steps. And he looked there, he said, stand up. You're sitting there long enough. Stand up and bless the Lord. Stand up and shout because God Almighty is doing something for us and going to bring back on down a little bit further. And thou hast made heaven and earth. Verse 7. And thou art the Lord God who didst choose Abraham and brought him forth out of Ur of Chaldees and gavest him the name of Abraham. He said, I got to thinking about the covenant promise of Abraham. We've sat there long enough. We've sat down long enough. It's time for us to rise and shout and let the world know that we've got the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ is going to reach the world. It's time for us to stand up and shout. Abraham's involved. How's the Lord God? Who did choose Abraham? We won't forget it. We're not going to let you down, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. We're not going to do it. They may not. I don't believe it dawned on you yet what I've said. Didn't I just say that there's about a, there's about a waste, of, waste of eight miles there that those fellows on the West Bank are going to have to defend? But why do they want Hebron? If they can discount Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they can promote over one billion Muslims in the world today. They can say it doesn't belong to us. That, that what Abraham and Isaac, Jacob said, we're going to take it over. And we'll let the world know it's going to be a mosque for the Muslim system. But it's not going to happen that way. Come out of there, Abraham. Come out of there, Isaac. Come out of there, Jacob. God Almighty's going to fulfill his word just exactly like he said he would. For the, in Galatians 3 and 8, And the scripture foreseeth that God would justify the heathen through faith. He preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall... Oh, that was Paul talking now. Ye, if ye be Christ, go on down, and then if ye be Christ, ye are Abraham's seed and heirs, heirs, Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We're heirs of that business over there. Are you sure you want that city? I tell you, you better get out of the quit fool around. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Because God Almighty is going to defend his cause. He did it many, many times before, and he's going to do it again. <laughs> Perez said, we are in danger of relinquishing the infrastructure of our spiritual survival. We are praying for a worldwide revival. Don't take away our identity. Don't take it away. I want to come on down to the other side of the covenant now. God told Abraham the covenant of circumcision would be forever. 
When Jesus came, the book of Luke, he said he came to bring the covenant of circumcision into the New Testament. Paul said, we are a Jew, which is one inwardly. And the circumcision is out of the heart and not of the flesh. Because Paul said in Colossians, we are buried with him in baptism through circumcision of the faith of the OPRATI operation. In that water, there's where God performs that operation that puts you in identity with Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. It's a continuity of that covenant. We are still in the covenant. It does affect me. It makes me feel bad because my father over there is in his grave and nobody to defend him. Nobody to defend him. We're going to stand up and defend Abraham and circumcision. We're going to do it. Paul said, buried with him. In baptism, you're circumcised. Right up there. That puts you, that puts you in the covenant of Abraham. Does that, does that make more sense now? Why do I talk about heaven? There's the same attack. The Muslims and a lot of systems is trying to come and claim the Holy Ghost or claim religious positions, claim they are part of the Bible, or they're part of the church, or they're a part of God. That same attack is going on now. But I want you to know, God Almighty said that this church is going on. Nothing is going to stop it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. It's going to stand forever. It's going to stand forever. I want you to know that we are a continuation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have that same covenant promise. That's a promise that God gave to Abraham. Now you say, what about Jesus' name, baptism? The only way to be fulfilled, to be in that covenant is to be circumcised with him, Paul says, in Colossians. And you are a part of God's divine, holy covenant. Abrahamic covenant. And those are not going to be going to be cut off. Jesus said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell, Arafat, Muslim, nobody else is going to prevail against. This church is going on. God said it's going on because we have the promise. We have the promise of Abraham. We have that promise. The church is going on. I've been here for 76 years. I was baptized in that covenant promise 70 years ago. I've been a spiritual Jew for 70 years. Hallelujah. I belong to that covenant. I belong to that covenant. Now, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church at the gates of hell shall not prevail against this beautiful church. He took those keys. Now, as he took those keys, he had a lot of opposition. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but to the same onslaught that's against Hebron, that same spirit is trying to destroy this apostolic Jesus' name gospel message. Are you with me? You're not shouting like you did this morning. I just want to know if you're with me. This is no time to shout. This is a time to bow up. I got the truth. I've been baptized in his name and filled with his lovely spirit. The Apostle Peter said, I'm continuing on with the covenant. On the day of Pentecost, it has fully come. But you have got the Holy Ghost and talked in tongues. Some said these people are crazy. All, all, right away they started to fight against it. They're mad. They're drunk. They're all this and that. But Peter said they're not drunk like you think. I'm going on down to say this.
They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Revival in Hebron for the promise. What promise? Circumcision. Abrahamic promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many. <laughs> Automatically there came an there come an attack against the original infrastructure of this church. And they started a persecution against it. They tried to destroy it. They tried to destroy that covenant promise. But, G, but Peter said, the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off. What promise? This promise. Abraham, Isaac, and that possession of God's bride grew and heavenly bride. Promise unto you, you children, for even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Sir, God ain't calling no other way. And I'm going to protect that tomb. I'm going to protect it. Acts 2.38, Peter said the promise, even as many as the Lord, our God shall call. Don't let an Arab, don't let an Arafat, don't let a religious system, don't let anything bring you, bring against that person, against that truth, to try to destroy the effect of the promise that God Almighty gave to them. Don't let nothing, don't let nothing stop it. Don't let nothing stop it. No, no. So, Jesus gave Peter the keys. When he did, he also said this. But he that lacketh these things blind cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from their sins. Give diligence, diligence to make your calling and election sure. Apostle Peter, I'm going to walk around your grave. Everything's all right. I'm going to protect it. That bunch over there is walking around Abraham, Isaac, Jacob's tombs. Everything's all right. You've got a bunch in here that's going to preach it. You've got a group in here that's going to preach it. If you don't, you see this. You gotta preach it. Just, just give me a couple more minutes. You may be seated. Not only did Jesus give Peter the keys to the plan of salvation, he also gave him the keys to tell the church how to dress. First Peter three, three and four, you read it for yourself. The adorning, all that stuff, all that things. So we are a part of this great New Testament covenant. And the Apostle Peter said, and I'm just about through. He said, we've had a lot of opposition over the years. He said, shortly, I must put off this tabernacle. I must put off this body. I'm soon going to die. And I'm going to have an Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob tomb. And I'm going to be buried. He said, when I die, I want you to keep Acts 2.38 in remembrance all the time. Keep, after I'm dead and gone, keep these things in remembrance. Mr. Arafat, 
You must not know what God's going to do with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You better get out of there before you get hurt and everything's against God's program. I wouldn't be in their shoes for 10 million worlds. I wouldn't be in their shoes for 10 Peter said, I'm still going to put off this tabernacle. I'm still going to die. But I said, I want you to have this covenant promise that God wants you to have it always. Don't ever get it. It's to you, your children, even. In other words, it's going to keep it going until God quits calling. Even, everybody say, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. <laughs> the church world said, he that believeth and is saved shall be baptized. I'm sorry. Mr. Arafat, he doesn't say that. He that believeth and is baptized. You can't be circumcised without being baptized. We're God's vice regents. We're his representatives through his keys and to his plan. We are the ones to handle God's given gifts. And I've been burdened for the past two years. I went to Pensacola with Brother Welch not long ago, and I went by that business over there and cursed it. There's even a lot of people saying you talk in tongues to live like you want to and protect them from being baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. There's a terrible, terrible, I said, don't slot to keep this truth from going out. But I want you to know we got a group of people here that's going to defend the covenant, the New Testament covenant. Going to defend it. I close with this. I say, God Almighty, there's 500 million people in the world that speak in tongues. That revelation of the Holy Ghost, last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Here is we're asking for revival. Heaven must retain Jesus Christ until the restoration of all things. I'm asking God for restoration of the covenant name of Jesus Christ in water baptism. I'm asking let it be revealed of people coming bus loads to our churches to be baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. I want to see them baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Why don't we pray that God would bring revelation of the name and revelation of the name of Jesus Christ to this world that many will be baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. I've just remained standing. I've just preached a 19 and 21 message. I know we didn't shout and all. But there's no time to shout with an air fat out there trying to take over. This time get down to business. I want right now, before we turn this back to Brother Anthony, I got a burden. I want to see it happen. I want to see a revelation of the name. Revelate, being baptized, you say, well, let them come to our churches by the droves. Would you lift your hands and let's pray and say, oh, God, Almighty, let there be a revelation of your name. Let there be a revelation of the name of Jesus in water baptism. Baptize him, buried with him in baptism through the faith of the operation. Bring us into that covenant. Let a revival in heaven. Let a revival this covenant. Let a revival your promise. Let a revival break out. <laughs>